Thanks for joining us on Tandem Radio for a very special segment by design, focused on helping you understand how God designed you so that you may be healthy and productive in fulfilling God's purposes in your life for many years to come. Now let's join our host, health expert and public speaker, Dr. James Prudian. Welcome to the By Design Radio Program. My name is Dr. James Prudian of Prudian Healthcare and PrudianHealthcare.com, where health literacy is the key to longevity. And as long as God has us on this side of eternity, my show is designed to educate you and your families to feel better, function better, and live as many quality disease-free years as possible. This is our third segment of a foundational series on clinical nutrition. I don't know how many segments it's going to be, probably a dozen or so, but uh, the first two, and including this one, I'm building a foundation of a third, fourth grade, fifth grade understanding of basic building blocks to nutrition. These shows that we're in right now are not really about you. They're not about you and the way you should eat specifically to your body type, to the age group you're in, or maybe to some of the health concern you, you have. These shows are designed to give us basic clinical human physiology. How are we designed? What are the five essentials of life? In the, in, we're in the middle of protein, carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, minerals, and water. Those are the five essentials to life. And we're going through an illustration or a program of defining exactly, for instance, what proteins are, what they do, and what the sources are. And really utilizing this picture or this illustration of a super fancy race car that requires optimal tuning and great fuel in order to run the most effective and efficient way possible and not putting diesel or dirty fuel into a motor that was that's in a Ferrari for instance. So we want to dumb it down and make it very basic because nutrition is so polluted in what we read and watch on TV that I don't feel people just take the time to understand the basics. So the basics as we've gone through them so far have been protein, carbohydrates, and fats. And as with all of the shows, we were going to take we take a very literal perspective on what these things are. This is an educational show so that you have tangible takeaways to go back to your life and to implement, hopefully for you and your families for the better, because our decisions and our choices are essential. Luke 137, for with God nothing is impossible. And I hope you all believe that, and we take that to heart as we learn more that nothing is impossible in our own lives as we can treat and many times reverse the chronic illness that so many Americans are plagued with because of the choices that we have made in our society. So I'll give you a couple of supporting myths to the last two, sh two shows that we've done. You can control your weight by counting calories. All calories are not created equal. Food that enters your bloodstream quickly promotes weight gain. Food that enters your bloodstream slowly promotes weight loss. So for example, calories from soda, all right, there's about 10 to 12 teaspoons of sugar. That's sucrose. You learned that last show what sucrose is. Literal definition of it, table sugar is in a can of cola. So that sugar from the soda enters your bloodstream very rapidly. The calories that you aren't going to use is stored as fat. Now the same amount of sugar from like kidney beans, which is a complex carbohydrate, it enters your bloodstream slowly. Now because your body has a greater chance of making use of calories over time, more is burned up and less is stored with the kidney beans. Now yes, if you're an athlete and you're churning and burning calories, it's going to be a little, a little bit different. Simple carbohydrates are essential. Simple carbohydrates are essential for everyone. But simple carbohydrates can be a Coca-Cola or an apple. So we want to be very, very careful as to how we're defining the word simple carbohydrate and complex carbohydrate and also the source. So the next myth, eating fat makes you fat. We've been brainwashed to believe that if we eat fat, we'll get fat. There's one problem. The science doesn't support the myth. In the last 40 years, our national consumption has decreased from 43% to 34% of our total calories. So eating less fat, we're eating less fat more than ever, and we're growing fatter. What's the reason? The low-fat diets are often rich in starchy and sugary carbohydrates, once again, man-made stuff, which raise insulin levels and promote weight gain. 
Insulin is that nasty hormone made by your, your pancreas, and that which is essential to life, but we're playing with it too much with the bad, simple carbohydrates. And those bad, simple uh, processed carbohydrates are going to jack up those insulin levels, and when that, we become fatter. So the myths around carbohydrates and fat, which we tried to illustrate in the last couple of shows, is that fat is essential. We just want good sources of fat throughout our day and avoiding man-made food is the place to start. And don't drink your calories. That moves to our, th uh, our fourth essential. Remember we have protein, carbohydrates, fats, then we got vitamins and minerals, and last one is water. We're gonna come back to vitamins and minerals in a second. Let's just think about water for a second. Now why, we always hear that water is so important for us, we need to drink water throughout our day. And we, we can sit there and ask yourself, well, why is that? Well, 60 to 70 percent of the human body is water. So if 60 to 70 percent of the human body is water, we better be feeding it water. Dehydration, and I don't mean the dehydration where you pass out and have to go to the, you know, the hospital. I mean moderate dehydration causes metabolic reactions to occur within the body that are not good for us. So to be consuming water as a, a very essential part of our day-to-day -day uh, is, is just critical. I, I, I'm a big fan of getting your own water container. I like the, uh, the, the ones that are not made of plastic, or if it is a plastic, please learn about plastics and uh, if you're going to use that. But, you know, it, get a water container and making sure that you're consuming enough water throughout your day. Now, what is enough water? Well, it depends on what you're doing. Okay, so if we're, if we're working out and you're in really good shape and you're working out and you're a fit person, your, your need for water is, is going to be greater in many situations than a couch potato. But that does not mean that a couch potato avoids drinking water. So we're going to avoid drinking our calories because there's no calories in water. And we want to make sure that we have four or five um, 12 to 16 ounce containers of water a day. That, that's right. That, that's, that's the amount of water we want to be flushing through our system and we want to be passing out. And it is an essential detoxification uh, source for the human body as well as keeping us hydrated. So when you, water is a relatively simple one. You know, I'm, whether or not you, you, you buy bottled water or you filter your water, I'm a big fan of filtration systems. So this way we do not buy the plastic bottled water which just ends up in our landfills. Um, you know, and I think that that's a, an essential component to all of our ecology on this planet, which is trying to avoid using plastic products which just fill up our landfills. And we, we need to learn from ancestors of ours. You know, if, if you can't hunt it, fish it, pick for it, dig it out of the ground, then we really shouldn't be consuming it. And water, they think about water is the same way. They fancy it up so many times with fancy bottles and various colors and they add sugar to it and you know the, the, the market on beverages is a multi-billion dollar business. God gave us water. It's one of the five essentials to life. Keep it simple. Okay, finally, vitamins and minerals. Vitamins and minerals or supplements, or we call them nutraceuticals, are an essential component to, to practice for people like myself. Although, and this makes something very clear, they do not sub uh, not to be substituted for a healthy diet. Healthy diet comes first. The types of foods we should be eating, quality, high quality sources of protein, carbohydrates, and fats are primary. Now, we live in a society where the farming and the industrial age has depleted a lot of the natural nutrients out of the soil, which is farming and the over-farming uh, of our soil the broccoli today, you know, the studies that show it doesn't have the nutrient content or the nutrient density it did maybe 50 or 80 years ago. So supplementation serves a very important purpose when we choose to supplement vitamins and minerals. There are two types of vitamins. There's fat-soluble and water-soluble. The water-soluble vitamins are things like vitamin C. The fat-soluble are A and D and the bees are also water-soluble. Water-soluble vitamins pass through us quickly. So they're the types of vitamins we should be ingesting throughout our day, whereas fat-soluble vitamins like A and D, we don't need to be ingesting that much of because our bodies store them. So 
Vitamins, obviously, without them, we wouldn't be alive, as well as minerals. Vitamins serve as uh, coenzymes, which cause reactions with our body. So in other words, in biochemistry, for one reaction to go into another reaction, many times we need a vitamin to make that happen. Now, the RDAs, which I'm sure many of you are up on and you research or know about, many of the RDAs are created, like, for instance, 60 to 80 um, milligrams of vitamin C. That is the minimum amount to prevent scurvy. So when you look at Linus Pauling's work on vitamin C, for instance, and you look at orthomolecular medicine, which is to put more than the RDA into our bodies, we're going to save the conversation. I'm aware of the conversation. I have it every day with my patients. But just to be aware that vitamins and minerals are essential. It should come from our food supply, but supplementation is recommended in many situations where we have depleted soil, particularly for something like an antioxidants. A, E, C, and selenium, four of my favorite antioxidants, because our soil has been so depleted from the antioxidants, which prevent us from getting cancer, for instance, they, and they protect the cell membrane from, uh, from oxidizing, the antioxidants have been shown that that is a supplement that many of us should be taking, particularly living in a polluted environment, high-stress environment, um, to give you an example of, of supplementation. So that concludes the five things, proteins, carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, minerals, water. A lot of the uh, how much we should be ingesting is individualized. I wanted this to give you a broad stroke, third, fourth grade, fifth grade definition of these things. So you know that, for instance, protein is for repair and growth. Carbohydrate is for energy. Fat is for long sustained energy as well as insulation of our bodies. Uh, water is obviously something that lubricates us, it detoxifies us, and it's an essential element to all of our cells. And vitamins and minerals many times act as coenzymes causing other reactions to occur within the body. You've been listening to the Pi Design radio program. Thanks for joining me, Dr. James Prudian. And if you have any questions for me, please submit them to prudianhealthcare.com. God bless you and have a great week. You've been listening to By Design with Dr. James Prudian of Prudian Healthcare. To learn more, visit us at tandemradio.com, that's tandemradio.com, or on Facebook. And don't forget to email us with your questions. We'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, hope you have a healthy week, and we look forward to you joining us next time for more fantastic insights from Dr. James Prudian on By Design, a special production of Tandem Radio.